happy Valentine's Day, guys. Still need a little longer. Come a little closer. I wanna dance with you. Everything's moving slower. I don't know what it is you do. I've been looking at you all night, trying to figure you out. I just wanna make you smile. Hold your hand in my hand, looking at the sunset. Man, you're looking good tonight. What you do Hey guys, welcome back and uh, happy Valentine's Day or as I like to celebrate happy single awareness day. Whatever you celebrate, glad you're here. Today I am doing a little baking. I'm excited to be in the kitchen. I'm going to make, for Valentine's Day, or for whatever you're celebrating, a Black Forest cupcake. I love cherries. Cherry is always my go-to flavor no matter what I'm eating, really. I also love chocolate, and if ever there was a holiday to celebrate chocolate, of course it's Valentine's Day. So I knew I had to do something chocolate-themed. Uh, I want to incorporate a little bit of fruit, so I automatically went to chocolate cherries, black forests. It's not a super hard cupcake to make, but it's really nice, really elegant. Uh, it's definitely an elevated cupcake. Can't go wrong with black forests. So happy Valentine's Day and let's jump in. So let's talk ingredients for the Devil's Food Cupcakes. The first thing you're gonna need is an all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, buttermilk, vegetable oil or any other neutral oil, baking soda, vanilla extract, salt, two large eggs, unsweetened cocoa powder, and lastly, you'll need some brewed espresso. Now, if you are like me and don't have an espresso machine at home, I used a ground espresso roast in a French press, and that'll also do the job just as well. Use about a half a cup of medium ground espresso roast, and add about three quarters of a cup hot water. All right, let's make these cupcakes. All right, so I'm gonna be using my stand mixer. You don't have to use a stand mixer. In fact, it might be better if you don't, just because you don't want to over mix this. Uh, I'm just using it because it's a lot easier for me. You can use a hand mixer. You can even whisk it by hand. This is a really simple recipe. What I'm gonna do is mix all of my dry ingredients and then we're gonna mix all of our wet ingredients all together and then we're gonna combine the two. Basic rules of baking. So let's do dry ingredients first. I'm gonna do one and a half cups of flour. One and a half cups of sugar. Half a cup of cocoa powder. One and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Since we have the dry ingredients in the, uh, the mixing bowl already, we're just gonna go ahead and use the whisking attachments. We're gonna go ahead and set the dry ingredients aside and we're gonna mix up our wet ingredients. You can do this in a mixing bowl, I like doing it in this because it's easier for me to just pour it in when I mix it in with the dry ingredients. So start with your two eggs at room temperature because that way if you get any shell in there you don't have to worry about it already being mixed in with anything else. I'm going to do one cup of buttermilk. Thank you. 
third cup of vegetable oil. Alright, now we're going to add the ingredient that really helps punch up the flavor of the devil's food cake, and that is the espresso. We're going to put a half a cup in here. And last ingredient, of course, is our vanilla, just one teaspoon. We're going to go ahead and mix up all of our wet ingredients, and then we will combine them with the dry. Alright, we are nice and mixed up, and now, with the mixer on a very low speed, we're going to slowly incorporate the dry and wet Now this recipe should make about 20 cupcakes, so go ahead and divide the batter evenly between the 20. Each cupcake liner should be about a little more than halfway full. And we're going to bake at 350 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes. Now that we're letting the cupcakes cool, we are going to make the cherry compote that is going to fill the inside of these cupcakes. I'm going to be using amaretto in my compote. If you choose not to use alcohol, you just put water instead of the amaretto. It'll work fine. Either way, it's going to taste delicious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cherries into a medium-sized wide saucepan because I want to be able to have all the cherries uh, be able to sit on an even layer. I'm going to add the sugar and I'm going to add whatever liquid I'm doing. So I'm going to do my amaretto. Gonna do it over a medium heat and we're kind of just waiting for the cherries to break down this could take upwards of 15 minutes we want all of that sugar to dissolve and we want the cherries to just kind of break down add and add some of that lemon zest to this Now that the cherries have really started to break down and uh, are starting to really soften, what we're gonna do is take a slotted spoon and remove all of the whole cherries. We're gonna put them back in the bowl and we're gonna keep just the sauce simmering over here and we're gonna thicken it a little bit with some cornstarch. Go ahead and take some of that cherry juice from the pan and put it into a small bowl. Mix in a couple teaspoons of cornstarch until you get a nice slurry. Then you can throw that back in the pan with the rest of the juice. Let it simmer until it starts to thicken up and then you can add it back into the cherries. Sweet. That is it for the cherry compote. Easy. 
Uh, we're going to let this cool to room temp, and then we're going to throw it in the fridge. And that'll be great for the actual filling of the inside of the cupcakes. So once this chills completely, we can start constructing this cupcake and decorate. All right, now that the cupcakes have chilled and the compote has chilled to room temperature, it's actually a little bit colder and it is really thickened up, we are going to go ahead and core all of the cupcakes. I don't have a core. I just use a paring knife. What you're going to do basically is just take in the center and just cut a nice little chunk out of the center. Now that we have gone ahead and cored all of the cupcakes, we are going to fill them with the cherry compote. Easiest way to do that is use a piping bag. Fill one piping bag and just pipe them each in. If you don't have a piping bag, you can also just spoon them in. A little bit messier, but it works just as well. You're gonna wanna cut off a pretty wide chunk from the bottom because you want those whole cherries to be able to get through. We're just gonna fill them up. Doesn't have to be a ton, but you just uh, want to really get it in there down at the bottom. Make sure you're not overflowing them. That you can go directly into frosting the cupcakes from here because the frosting is going to cover the filling. I personally, because I plan on doing a little bit of a design with my frosting on top of these, like to uh, cut off a little bit of uh, the inside portion of these pores and then just put the top back on, kind of just like placing it like a cap. For me, it just gives me a smoother surface to work on, but it is completely optional. Now that our cupcakes are fully constructed, we get to move to the fun part frosting these and I'm planning on doing like a decorative rose on top of all of these cupcakes. However, traditionally a Black Forest cake uses a uh, cream instead of like a frosting. And so I'm going to use a stabilized whipped cream to decorate each of these because we really want the chocolate and the cherries to be the star of the show and we don't need to add another super sweet flavor onto that. So I'm going to be making a whipped cream. I'll color the whipped cream so I can have different variety of roses. As you know, whipped cream doesn't hold normally uh, for long periods of time. So in order to frost it and really get the definition of these roses, we need to make a stabilized whipped cream. So what you're gonna need, obviously heavy whipping cream. You're gonna need vanilla, a little powdered sugar, gelatin is our key here, and then your variety of colors, whatever colors you want to do for the roses. So uh, first thing we need to do, because we're gonna do this in a couple different batches so that we have a variety of different colors. Uh, first thing you need to do is mix your gelatin packets with a little bit of water. You're gonna let it sit for about five minutes. This is letting the gelatin bloom. Once it looks fluffy on top, you're gonna wanna mix it in and then you're gonna put it in the microwave for about five to eight seconds and mix it in because you really want all of that gelatin dissolved. You do not want it hot. So you, I'm doing this first because the gelatin, when I add it to the whipped cream, once it's whipped, it cannot be hot. It needs to be back down to room temperature when you incorporate it. Otherwise the whipped cream will seize and split and it'll be a whole mess. So um, I recommend doing this first uh, so that you can let it sit and get to room temp when you're adding it to the whipped cream. Now that we've gone ahead and got the gelatin ready, let's get our whipped cream ready. I have put the bowl and the whisk attachment in the freezer for about 30 minutes. It just helps if everything is super chill when whipping whipped cream, it makes it a lot easier. We're gonna put about a cup and a half of whipped cream into the bowl. And then we're gonna use whichever food colorings you want. This is the stage you want to add the food coloring to. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna go ahead and beat this whipped cream until we get some soft peaks. And, and at that point, we're gonna add our half a cup of powdered sugar. And a 
half a teaspoon of vanilla as And it's at this point that you want to add that gelatin that we blew. We are going to start piping. And uh, the reason I did so many colors, normally when I do this, most of the times I just do one color and uh, I just pipe it all one color. But I wanted to try doing some variation, see if I can get more color combinations in the flowers, make them look a little bit more realistic. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I put them in smaller bags and what I'm gonna do is put the tip, this petal tip, this large petal tip that I'm gonna be using, if you can see that. What we're gonna do is put that in its own bag. Two different colors in here. I'll cut the ends off of the two pinks here and add both of them into this one. So that way I can um, control how much of each and they're not mixing together and just forming one color. They're staying separate, but they're coming out at the same time through the tip. The roses are actually pretty easy to achieve. It just takes a little practice. With the large part of the petal tip on the cupcake, you wanna make a small cone in the center. Continue going around that cone in rows, making small petals. The petals should get bigger and point outward towards the outside of the cupcake. It sounds complicated, but it's actually a pretty easy technique to get. That's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day. If you make this recipe, send it to me. I would love to see. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.